up, you guys? This is It's Real with Jordan and Demi. And today we have on the show Noah Kirel. Um, she is only 20 years old and representing Israel, uh, but she is now on her way to conquer the American market. So please welcome Noah. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. How are really, you doing today? Really grateful well, to have you. you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I'm doing well. It's been a wild uh, year or so for you, going from an Israeli pop star. Now you're conquering foreign markets. You're coming to North America. You're doing interviews with American uh, blogs like us, and and different. Uh, you know, you're you're been all over the place. So what is this? You know, when I looked up interviews of you, you know, you've talked about going into the American market, but really, how is it going yeah. so far? How do you feel this transition is is going for you? I think it's been almost two years of COVID and it was super challenging and everything, uh, you know, I, I did uh, everything remotely uh, from Israel and it was super challenging, but it, it makes me stronger and even more ready than I thought that I was to do that um, worldwide. And it's always been my dream. And since I was like, three, four years old, I imagine myself on the biggest stages in the world. So I'm like going after my dream and working so hard and want it so bad. And it's been challenging, but um, I started when I was 13 here in Israel. So I feel like I'm coming ready and I know how, uh, how to deal with success and how to work hard on on something that you love and passionate about. And I just, I just, I just feel ready. I feel ready, and I want it so bad. So mm. slowly, slowly, yeah. Let's go. I feel like just hearing you talk, you are someone who has a lot of wisdom, um, and you have been doing this for a minute. What or who keeps you grounded through all the craziness? Um, I think my family. Um, they're very supportive um, since I was 13 and I um, started this long and powerful journey. They always been by my side and I think family, definitely family. My parents are the best and they're always with me. And even when I'm coming to the States, they're coming with me and mm -hmm. it's they're the, they're the best really. So it's definitely my family. So your latest single thought about that is out. Here's the uh, cover for it. Look at it's that. That is so fire. Thank you. For this, like who dressed you and how much a part of imaging are you involved in? So I'm really enjoying of uh, to, like to create looks and in different in each video I'm looking different and I'm wearing different uh, clothes and the hair and the makeup it's so fun to play with it and it's so playful and fun so I have my team here in Israel and also my team in the states so it just every video is a journey of how I want to look what I want to be who I want to be this time mm -hmm. and it's playful and it's it's a fun process yeah, I I saw in another interview that uh, for the bad little thing video video you had seven looks in one day or seven. Yeah. How did that? How is that even possible? How what was that experience like having to do all those looks? Because these weren't just like changing clothes, changing your shirt, changing your shoes. It was a yeah, whole thing. It's the whole look from head yeah. to toe. I really honestly don't know how I did it in a one day. I really don't know. I don't have answer for that. But um, it was so important for me to have those so many looks and to give the video feel like it's a movie. So it's really important to me um, to to bring those different looks in every video and to be different and like, like in every video and to be uh, unique. So it's it's work, but it's fun. It's playful. On the topic of videos, one thing that I noted was you you literally have some of the coolest videos I've ever seen. Um, and I feel like every time you put up a new release, it you step it up a notch. So what was your favorite video to shoot? Um, it's it's hard question. I would say I uh, thought about that, the last one, because it, mm -hmm. I don't know why it felt so um, futuristic and and like like old times with the things that are happening right now. And I really enjoy 
filming this video. You're obviously your imagery and your, your style is very important, but so is your choreography. You have some amazing choreography mm -hmm, in your yeah. videos and your stage shows. Do you have the same choreographer working with you all the time or do you uh, hire different people or, and how much of the choreography yeah. is, is, is influenced by you yourself? So I've been dancing since I remember myself. Um, so it's really important for me to dance in every video. Mm -hmm. And also the performance is very um, strong part of what I'm doing obviously. So I have this, um, a few choreographers that I'm working with in every video or show. And it's really important for me that the choreography will be fire and the dance is very important for me. Who do you look up to in terms of dance videos? I see, uh, there's a, um, you know, a Britney influence. There's sort of a Janet yeah. Jackson influence. So do you watch a lot of music videos? Did you grow up watching a lot of music videos like that? Of course. Um, like you said, like Britney and Janet Jackson and Beyonce and yes. Jennifer Lopez. She's like a dancer, dancer. And this vibe is very important to me and the performance. And they're doing everything. They're dancing, they're singing, they're acting. They're strong women and with strong message. And I look up for those women very, very much. You know, she kind of reminds me of Jordan, just yeah. a little bit, like I'm getting like early Shakira vibes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Early I Shakira. love her. When, what, what was that song, Whenever, Wherever? You know that one song? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. And she's she's a dancer also, so that's a compliment. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm like been I've been itching the entire time talking about this. Let's talk about bangs for a second. Mm -hmm. We're on the topic of imaging. Did you say you cut your own bangs? Is that what you said before? I did like uh, my uh, hair designer did like the first one, and then I I just took scissors and I was like here a little bit, here a little bit, you know. I just felt it, and it's kind of new, so I'm excited about uh, my bangs, and <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. To play with it, yeah. We had Upsal on the show, um, I think it was you know, last winter, and she convinced me she has bangs. Like she was, and right before the show, she's like, she comes on and we see her with like a scissor. And we're really? like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? She's literally so crazy before the show and we're like, wow. So she convinced me that this is a great idea as well. And I think, I don't know, bangs are having come back. They look great on you. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to cut mine because okay. when I did it one time. Yours look amazing. I just got it cut by, by someone, you know? Amazing. Thank I you. like it. I love I love the look on you. Does it make you feel like more intellectual? Yeah. Right? I feel smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I feel left out because I don't have any bangs. I, I need to get on that. <laughs> I still got a few. I still got a I couple. I want to see your bangs. Yeah, Jordan. <laughs> no, let's go back a little bit. One thing I, I enjoy about um enjoy about talking to artists from different countries is learning about um, the music scene there and what they were surrounded by when you were growing up. I know that you, you were on TV at a young age. Uh, yeah. where, where did you, where did you perform? What kind of places did you perform in as a teen, as a young teenager? And where did you kind of cut your teeth musically in Israel? Um, a lot of festivals, big festivals and that I performed since I was uh, very young with my songs. And also, you know, growing up in Israel, but I growing up listening to, uh, pop music in America. If it's like, mm -hmm. like I said, Britney, uh, Rihanna, Shakira, uh, Beyonce. So it's very, um, growing up, I growing up listen to those, uh, women and it's very, you can very like feel it on my music. Even when I growing up in Israel, um, I always loved pop music. I always loved, uh, strong women and it came together perfectly. Yeah. Coming from Israel, um, you know, I want to know how much, because you're going into the pop world, and what is your mission going into the pop world? Um, is there something that you would want to do differently? Or, uh, you know, because whether it's Dua Lipa or Ariana, yeah, what, what do you want to bring to the table differently than maybe they have done or like maybe, you know, your idols have done in the past? Yes. Um, I believe that the fact that I'm from a different country, I... Um, automatically bring bringing something else to the table wow. and I bring in my culture and myself and the Israeli chutzpah if you know yeah. what it means it's like sassiness <laughs> <laughs> um, that um, we have here in Israel 
so I believe that I'm different already and maybe in the future to bring like Hebrew words into songs or Hebrew uh, melodies um, yeah maybe in the future when you started singing in English how yeah. difficult was that a transition for you to um, cause uh, first of all, when did you learn to speak English? Like were, were you small or were, was it recently or? Um, when I was little from movies and series and songs, obviously, uh -huh. and it always felt supernatural to me to sing in English. Um, you grew up with, with American pop music. Yes, exactly. I grew up listening to America, American pop music. So yeah, it felt supernatural for me to sing in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your latest single, let's go back to that one real quick. And I love to ask this question. Um, what inspired the song or who inspired the song? Um, so I uh, thought about that is very strong and empowering and mm -hmm. feminine song. That's what I felt it's from about, that big time. Yeah, it's, it's about a breakup after um, he broke her heart and the whole vibe of the song is I'm not going to sit in my bed crying over you. I'm going to go out. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to sing. I'm going to dance. And I will probably maybe will be with the other guy and all those things, <laughs> and all those things that I'm doing right now, like, sorry, not sorry. You should have thought about that before you broke my heart. Oh my so God. the vibe is very empowering, uh, sassy <laughs> and Super sassy. Chutzpah, <laughs> like I said, the Israeli chutzpah. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I so? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever? I mean, oh God, you're 20. Have you ever been heartbroken or have dealt with a breakup? Yeah, I think Denny's yeah. asking if this was inspired by a real person. Or <laughs> so, person. so I've been asking this question a few days ago. Um, if someone broke my heart, and I said no, but. I was thinking about it and I think the definition of broken heart is different to every person. So, so maybe I did in certain way. I can say that, but yeah. And what is your type of guy? Do you like the pop boys? Do you like musicians? Do you like actors? I love models. 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 Pretty boys. Really? Oh no. Really? I I'm, I'm having a hard time with that to be honest mm. right now, because model guys, I don't know, man, I've just. Demi's a fashion model, professional fashion model here in New York. Oh. And so oh, wow. she owns the model boys. So there's this sometimes, you know, there's just not much going on here, but I do get, you know, a little arm candy, a little eye candy, you know, girl, I feel you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When you it's, come to work, we can have like a, I'll hook you up, you know, you know, mm. let's go. Yeah, we can try it. <laughs> Yeah. Do you feel like um, in relationships, are you the one calling the shots more than the guy? Since you're, I feel like you're, you're strong enough that like you, mm. you're the one calling um, the shots. Maybe. Mm. <laughs> maybe. Um, probably. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, we want to talk about one thing that you did recently that was really cool was you opened the Miss Universe pageant with this, crazy choreographed number with all sorts of dancers behind you. What was that experience like? First of all, how did you get roped into that in the first place? How did, how did they contact you? How did you get that job? Um, they did the, uh, the competition in Israel and they look for a uh, local artist to do that and also international artists. So they called me and I was like, Oh my God, of course. Yes. And I never felt something like that. It was, it was so fast. Like those three minutes, I think, of the show, it it they're been through so so fast. Like in one second, I don't know. It was super emotional, and just to think that so many people around the world are watching me right now for the first time, and it felt so special and so strong. Yeah. How long did it take to learn? How how long was the the learning the choreography? all that how long did that, how much was the how big was the rehearsal process um i did something about uh five or six rehearsals on this um on this show and it was so fun process to learn the choreography and to be with the dancers and to bring on this stage something so powerful and i'm so lucky and it was 
the most amazing experience in my career until now. Until now. <laughs> until now, yeah. You have uh, you released a few singles. Is is uh, can we expect uh, an album or an uh, EP or something? What's coming down the line for you in the next? Few yeah, months? for sure. Um, I'm always working on new songs and of course EP and album in the future. I hope, hopefully, very soon. And there are always new music that I'm working on. So a lot of surprises soon. Get Ooh. ready. Collaborate. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Also. Mm. Yeah, I was gonna ask if if you if you had any because uh, you've done you've had a couple remixes uh, of your songs, um, and I really like the Bling Bling remix. And I think Bling Bling is a cool you. song because I feel like you know, like Bling Bling, we think of it as a, as an English language term, but also there was there was Hebrew in there, and so yeah. it's kind of like a, a transitional song, uh, which was really cool. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, are you gonna are you? That's what we want to ask now is. Are there collaborations coming out? Because I can see you like uh, teaming up with an American rapper, or you know, like like what's going on there? Yeah. Um, so of course, it's it's part of what I want to do in the future to do collaborations. I feel like it's coming very very soon, and I'm working on it. Um, there is a lot of people that I want to collaborate with. Um, so yeah, a lot of surprises. Another thing I want to talk about is Bad Little Thing. That's yeah. One of my favorites as well as the, as the new release um thank you also super girl power vibes i love but like you you're i feel like you're putting out music that are very women empowering and uh but i genuinely feel that from you when i talk to you i feel like you're a strong young woman yeah. with with a good head on her shoulders and i think if anyone's going to talk about women empowerment in a song like you you should you know and you Thank are so um what tell us about the making of that music video because i also love that one a lot too it was so intense day like you said seven looks in one day mm -hmm. um every video is like a new world and the to me the, song, the making of a song my bad yes yes um every sorry every song is like a different world to me mm -hmm. and i put like everything in it um, if it's like the looks, the dance, um, the background, everything, everything is super important to me. And also the song is very, like you said, very uh, women empowerment and, and strong message. And um, that's what I want to, that's like the message that I want to, um, that, that I wanted to come from me to young girls that are listening to my music, mm -hmm. that they, they're beautiful enough, they're strong enough. Um, they don't need anybody to feel, to feel strong enough. And this is like the message that I want to give them, those young girls that are listening and watching me. Do you remember being in the studio recording that song and writing it and kind of like, what was that like for you? Um, it's such a fun process to, to write about such empowerment, uh, thing, and just thinking that a lot of people are gonna hear it and to feel empowerment with those those songs that I'm writing. So I have a lot of responsibility, um, but also it's 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 fun process to write and to create and to do the video and the looks. No, part of uh, our, our show is about life in the music industry, not just about the music itself. Mm -hmm. And you're on Atlantic, you're on a major American label now. And I was curious about the process of signing with an American label. If, uh, if you had to go through a lot of different meetings, it, how choosy you were, how stressful it was. Can you tell us about the process of, of signing with an American label? So when I came to Atlantic, I was um, almost 18 years old and I was so excited and I didn't believe that it's happening to me. And um, I just uh, joined the army in Israel in the same time. And I was um, a little bit scared how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to work a lot of uh, remotely kind of things. And also then the COVID just came and it was super challenging. Um, and it's also super different from Israel because here it's such a small country. And um, my team is like, what, seven people? And in the States, the team is like 30, 40 people. 
and a lot of meetings and to know a lot of new faces but it's it's amazing uh journey and I'm, I learned and I'm still learning every day so much and I'm developing myself as as an artist and as a person so I'm, I'm it's really important for me to enjoy it from all that those things and uh to enjoy the way yeah. it's really important yeah do you uh you're in Israel right now do you see a, a time when maybe that you'll move to the US like maybe to LA or to New York for a long period of time? Yeah, um definitely yeah, uh cuz I'm seeing myself on hopefully hopefully on the biggest stages in the world and I know that I need to be there uh to do that worldwide and it's important for me so I'm going to do whatever it takes. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't count against you. I I besides your determination you, you you come across as someone who works all the time. Do you, how do you find time to relax? How do you find time to sleep, to eat, to hang out with friends and family? How do you do it? Um, I don't like to relax. I, I love to work like 24 seven. That's what I'm doing since I was 14. So I'm kind of used to it and I love it. And I love what I'm doing so much. So it's, it's, it's work and it's intense, but it's so fun. Um, also, uh, but yeah, I, I learned how to find my time to myself, to my friends, uh, if it's vacations and just time to chill. And I learned how to organize everything together. Yeah. Who's in your inner circle? Like, I feel like everyone in, in the entertainment industry at a certain point just has like that one friend or that one person that they know they can ask them, okay, is this great idea or am I crazy? Um, who's in your inner circle? I would say my parents, because I feel like they're the only, um, the only one that can tell me the truth all the time. And mm -hmm. they're, they're always like watching my back and here for, for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my parents. You go to your mom or your dad? Um, I think both really. Oh. That's both. good. That's that's a really you should feel really lucky. A lot of people don't have both parents so lucky. to be close to. Yeah, and I'm assuming know. That, have they always been supportive of your of your entertainment dreams, or would it take a while to convince them? Oh. Always, my dad. Always, my mom. Uh, at the beginning, she was a little bit scared of it because it's it's not an easy world. Um, but she realized that I love it so much and she has no choice. And now she's like, she's so happy uh, for me and they're so happy for me and they're always by my side. And yeah, it's, they're the best really. I'm so lucky. You were a judge on Israel's Got Talent. The, uh, the We have America's Got Talent and there's Britain's oh, yeah. Got Talent and all this. Um, so that goes to show you that how big of a star you are in Israel, because you can't, you have to be yeah. a pretty big, well-known person to be a judge on that show. So at this point, now that you, especially that you're in the American market, you must be such a big deal in Israel. Can you go down the street without people bugging you? Can you eat at a restaurant without people bugging you? What What is life like for you in your home country now? Um, so um, it's hard to go to the mall or in the street. But I'm so used to it. Um, like I said, I started when I was 13. So when I was 14, I already, um, everybody know who I am and what I'm doing. And they have a lot of things to say about me. And um, I'm kind of used to it. But yeah, I, I can't really go to the mall or <laughs> or the street or, right. yeah. You get <laughs> but it's part of by, it, you know. By paparazzi, do paparazzi follow you around? And take your picture and all uh, stuff. yes but it's not like in america when you have like 30 40 cameras on you it's like one or two you know we're a small country so it's like yeah, yeah. Well, that's all yeah. right that's all right yeah I feel like the more presence i mean the more with more success there also comes you know kind of like the challenges or the haters or whatever like um do you feel like how do you kind of navigate through maybe more success or more followers on social media. And every now and then you just check a DM and it's like something super rude. Um, yeah. How do you do that? Like as a female, I think it happens more to girls. Like I don't really think it happens to Jay-Z as much as it happens to Beyonce. You know For what I'm sure. saying? So how do you personally, uh, 
what what kind of things do you do to it's, yeah um it's not easy yeah. obviously um and when i was super young um at the beginning i didn't realize that um everyone are t like talking about me and everybody everybody can say anything they want and to write everything they want and at the beginning i was like oh my god they're so mean but then the things that i've been through in such young age make me so much stronger and i realized that this is the situation and i can't um sit by my bed and crying um about it and i just need to be myself and to go through all those um if it's bad comments or I don't know what, it's just like I'm doing me and you can say whatever you want. I'm getting focused on the people that loves me and and the good uh, side of it. And, but yeah, it's not easy. And I still um struggling sometimes. Yeah. And it was from like a spam account too. Like no one ever says something mean from like, their real account, like you, you know what I'm saying, right? It's yeah. From like one, two, three, four, eight, one. Or seven. in your face, it's yeah. like. Or in your face, yeah. Well, we're yeah. If you have something to say, you can say it in your face. Let's go. Uh, yeah, it's part of it. It's, it's part of it, and um, it's part of it. And I just you need you need to have uh, to be very strong to be in this industry. Yeah. I feel like maybe Britney Spears or Christina, you know, girls from what, even just 20 years ago, when they're at their height 20 years ago, I feel like that they, they didn't really have Instagram. So they weren't evil, you know, like what would they get? Like mean packages to their yeah. assistance. Letters. It's more like you have actual access to anything, anyone around the world. Yeah, everything is so easy say. to reach to. You can just I know. post it online and it's super easy. Mm -hmm. And it's it, make, it makes it even harder. It's a lot of pressure. So yeah, it's not easy business. It's kind of an interesting thing to think about is, would you rather have been a pop star in 2001 versus 2021 or 21, 2022? Wow. Yeah. On one hand, nowadays, you can spread your influence so much quicker through streaming and through social media and through YouTube or whatever. And back then, you know, it took longer. There was fewer outlets to show your videos and stuff. But at the same right. time, you didn't have to deal with all that BS that you have to deal with now. So if you had to choose now or early 2000s, which which one would you rather come up in? It's a tough call, I think, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. Because today you have Instagram and TikTok and the, those platforms are helping you mm -hmm. to become uh, a star. So I don't know what I would choose, but um, maybe today. Yeah, yeah, that's kind yeah, of what I Maybe saying. today, yeah. 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 I, I want to go back. You mentioned the uh, military service, you know, in America, we don't have mandatory military service. So it's, it's something that's interesting to us. <clears throat> yeah. And as a musician, I was curious what you actually did for your, you were in like a military a band, band or right? something, right? Yes. Uh, uh, the basic training that everybody uh, needs to go through. Um, it was uh, challenging and what I'm doing in the army, I'm performing to soldiers with my songs and it's it's an amazing experience um soldiers all over the country and just to serve my country and also um to work on my music and my career it's it, it's so special to me and it's it's an amazing experience do me imagine if you had to learn how to fire a machine gun at the same time as recording your demos and doing <laughs> <laughs> I love that's what i did you were thinking about doing because i was about to ask her well, were there any like hot soldiers? Like what was going on? <laughs> was you have no idea. <laughs> Carol, you have no idea. <laughs> She'd be like, oh my God. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Why do yeah, I embarrass myself yeah. like this on the show? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's an amazing experience also to serve my country and also um to keep working. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Noah, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you. We really appreciate your time. And we are really excited to see what you do in the next year or so. I feel like a lot of people in America are going to really know who you are, you know, by the end of 2022. So Amen. excited to see where you go. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me 
Um, thank you so much. Yeah. All right. We'll see you later, Noah. See you later. Bye. Bye. So that was Noah, and you can check out her music on Spotify and YouTube everywhere, of course. Uh, Demi, that's fun to see someone right on the precipice of becoming big here in America. I also think there's something special about Noah. We've had a lot of people on the show, a lot of young, we've had young kids on the show. We've had like 19 year olds, I think, on the show. But there's something about her that strikes me as really smart, talented, obviously talented. But I think you're right, Jordan. There, we're going to know about Noah. Everyone's going to know about Noah pretty soon. So I'm excited. Gonna there's like a there's like a maturity even though she's 20 yes you talk to her it feels like you're talking to a 35 40 year old woman in terms of what she's able to uh handle you know 100 yeah smart girl all right all right guys that'll do it for us you can listen to our past episodes on spotify iHeartRadio, anywhere else you listen to podcasts you can watch our episodes on youtube and facebook and catch us on tiktok and instagram so until next week we'll see you later mm-hmm.